Hi, we are Jacob and Maggie. We live in our camper van, our birdhouse. Join us on our adventures as we travel along the Mediterranean coastline looking for a property to homestead. Last episode, we drove in 12 hours all the way from Greece to Croatia. As it turns out, we will be too early in the Rijeka. So we will need to kill some time. Last time, we went south along the Croatian Kvarna coastline. We drove past a couple of wonderful spots that looked really promising. Park for Night also had some good recommendations. We decide to take a second look and see if these are really that good as we thought they would be. First, we take a look at the deserted beach we found on our early explorations. We managed to film it from the car. We do not know if it's reachable by car, so we park and walk to see if it's open. The bay is beautiful, but alas, still closed. Also, the direction of the wind indicates it will be spooky during the night. Let's not do this. So we turn and decide to go for a better option, Camp Kosica. As we know by now, if you want to go for a good spot, timing is essential. If you lurk in your preferred camping between 10 and 11 in the morning, you'll have the best chance of getting a prime spot with first row sea view. Because most van lifers hit the road around 10, and the ones that are already standing on second row are not yet fully awake or ready packed to move to first row. So you can cheerfully park your car in seconds at the best spot available. And that was exactly what we did at Kosice. The best spot. This is my backup system. This is my Blue Etty. Very happy with it. It's um, solar charging right now. It's already 100%. That's within 30 minutes. This is an internal 16TB uh, hard drive. Uh, we do all the backups to this drive. This is the only backup we have. Uh, I'm currently running a backup of episode 11. And this is our work drive. It's a 2TB SSD. And this gets full all the time. So uh, whenever it does, once in a week, once every two weeks, I uh, do a backup on uh, this disc. And yeah, hopefully it'll work and it'll last. But, uh, yeah, it's all backup on YouTube. The sea is fertile. There is an abundance of fish. The seagulls look for them all day. Some of them take watch, and as soon as a school of fish emerges, they alert each other and feast.
we read about a good restaurant just around the corner, one kilometer away, Tammy and Barbie. The reviews were quite promising, so we were in for a nice walk. What followed was a terrifying experience. Te bakken. Het is hem echt, hè? Dat zijn gordijnen, het ziet er iets anders uit. Ja. Tering, zeg. Nou, het schijnt lekker te zijn. Dus, uh... Tot dan! Is dit Tammy en Barbie? Ja. You Tammy en Barbie? Nee. <laughs> Oké, okay, wel. Waar wil je zitten? Niet in het Daar, achterin? Ja. Ook goed. Ja, yeah, many flies, hè? Ja, ja, ja. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, 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 Een wandelingetje, hè? It is time to move to Rijeka. The weather there is almost always nice because it's minutes away from the sea. Upon arrival, we park our birdhouse wild in the streets of the city. We are needed at Merlin's castle. We have promised to buy him some gardening tools, so we head to Bauhaus. Not the art designer movement from the beginning of the 20th century, nah. Nor the English post-punk band, remember that? But the largest construction market in Croatia. What do we need for gardening? Mm, one spade. One hoe. One hatch trimmer. Shopping trolley is already filling up nicely. Mm, maybe some seeds. Some flower bulbs. And also some plants. And after a silly joke, we head for the garden. 
First, we cleaned the garden from weed, dug a hole to see how deep the soil was, and pruned it out a bit. What did you do? Um, I'm turning into a hulk. <laughs> Next on the to-do list. Assembling a saw table because we needed to top the office desks. They were too high. Job done. Nice. Also, mounting the bar to the kitchen and assembling a couple of china cabinets. Some of his Amsterdam office stuff also arrived in that period. So, in Rijeka, there are many stairs. And this is the cursed stair. Cursed because, according to popular belief, no one can count the exact number of steps. There are 561. This goes on. And on. And then, uh, when you think you're done, which is uh, about two stairs from now. And it turns out you're not even halfway. Let me zoom in for a bit. Oh my God. Okay. This was definitely more fun going down. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think I'm halfway. Can we now take this one? No, I have to go here. I'd love to go up more, but this is actually uh, we will stop the stairs. Hey, gorgeous. Oh, well, that was fun. Uh, kinda. Turns out uh, I was wrong. <laughs> this is not the exit. We'll have to go for the bonus level, the bonus climb. Here it comes. It was wishful thinking. One thing is good, it's like five or six steps, then you can take six or seven steps, and it's again one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can take ten steps. Oh my, how many more? <laughs> I'll race you to the top! <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> Maybe I will. I'm gaining. Yo! 
<laughs> and he's in the lead. Already there's a gap, three, five meters gap. Oh, now no note makes mistakes, man. Oh God, can he make it? On the bonus climb, only about 20 more. He's so tired. Yeah, it's the rest of a minute. Oh, there's Maggie. Oh, here she goes. Oh, God damn it. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, she's definitely a winner. <sighs> okay. Take a look at my face. We did it. Rika stairs. But the view is nice. Tortoise Bay is a small pond in the middle of Rijeka. These are tame tortoises. I know the Dutch name for them. Rotebank schildpadden. And they're probably dumped here. Or some kind of organization must have put them here. But um, they're fed. People feed them. And you can tell by... This is what Maggie did. It was very funny. So... Uh, she feeding... Uh, Gestures, you see, they will come towards her. Yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> oh, we didn't bring any food. Little did we know. I mean, how can we know? Nope, we have no food. Sorry, sorry, guys. Maybe next time. By the way, what would you like for supper? In Rijeka, we stayed at a very nice Airbnb apartment. Yelena Delta or Yelena Delta. We'll put a link in the description. We stayed here for a couple of days, almost a week I think, and it was really nice. I need to have some time with uh, a lot of shower time and close to my line. Yeah, I needed it. Yeah, it was nice. So you can see. And now we are ready to go to leave the apartment. After all the work, we sat down and talked for a bit in the camera. So, we are not in the camper. We are in a house, an apartment, for a couple of days. Because our son is moving in, in his house. Yeah, and he lives in Rijeka. And this is nearby. So, and tomorrow we are leaving again. We are going back to the camper. Yeah, we parked it in the streets in Rijeka. Just wild. We um, removed all our belongings so it's basically an empty camper but still it feels uh, very awkward, very strange. Yeah, difficult feeling. I visit the camper every day. Yeah, well the last thing you uh, heard from us that, that we were in Greece. After some time there were some problems. We did not really agree on the properties we saw that led to some stress. Well, this is a some kind of a time out. We've been here six days a week. We had long discussions about how we will proceed and what we will do and what we will not do. But um, we think it is still possible to go on. But we need to redefine what exactly we are looking for. We are going to make a list for our uh, things 
we like to have from the property in the house. So we can make new plans. Turning point was the Villa Sarikiniko that we saw in uh, Paka on top of a hill overlooking the sea. Wherever you see there's sea and on the other side there's forest. It was a very silly house. I thought it was perfect that it fit all the conditions. But uh, Maggie didn't. No, I think it was too expensive. Uh, it was too wild. Not easy to make our garden settings. And uh, it was too far from the, the city too. And the road to the top was complicated. You can't do it by car. But uh. the, the most most thing for me was the it was too expensive. And that's the uh, risk is too big for me. Okay, for me not. But uh, then that then it's a no, because we have to agree. Those things um, you might have said, well, didn't you talk about that earlier, in an early stage, and defined what the uh, circumstances are, and laid down a plan of what you want? Yeah, but we did. We did. Maybe if there's a good spot, maybe the climate's okay on the sea. I don't know. But not too wild, not too complicated, not too far from a normal place. It's, it's yeah, it's too heavy for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the situation. Next time, hopefully, you will see us again uh, laughing in our camper van and having a good time. For sure. Is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Subscribe. Yeah, Please. yeah, 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 yeah. So allow us to go and continue uh, the journey. Well, um, we are on uh, how many subscribers? You've a little, little under two hundred now. It would be so nice if we would reach the the goal of one thousand, but that won't happen anytime soon. Thanks. Jacob is calling an Uber now. We have decided to go back to our tiny house in the woods. We will return our journey in September after the high season. We quit our job, sold our company, sold our house, but we didn't stop working. Far from. The last three months have been an experience to never forget. It was in one word, incredible. We traveled through 13 countries in three months, drove 15,000 kilometers, visited 50 places and had a lot of time traveler's wife experiences. Deja vus of possible future properties. We have seen so much, so much beautiful nature. Endless sea, but also so many people. Traffic situations along the way and border crossings. Read so many road signs and so many names of places we passed. What a wealth, so together and how lucky we were to be able to do this. Our space in the camper was very small, but our world was very big. What an impression. Traveling is beautiful, but super intensive. Sometimes we ask each other, is the camper small or large today? In other words, how much personal space do we need for the day? How free and safe does the environment feel? It has been more than one journey. The journey itself as the destination. The journey being so close together in such a small space. The confronting journey of constantly filming. The creative journey of making movies. Technical journey of editing and assembling 16 movies. The tantalizing journey of YouTube and other social medias, thumbnails, captions, chaptering, the works. We set off on definitely more than one journey. Living in a camper went pretty well for us. Yes, always do the dishes right away and it is more convenient to go to sleep together at the same time, of course, different than at home. And always tidy up everything. You can't leave anything behind, everything in its right place. 
we also made sure that we had always something healthy to eat. Rice, pasta, oatmeal, lots of vegetables, pancake flour and eggs. We never run out of food or inspiration to cook. When we arrived in Greece, things turned out to be more difficult. A beautiful free spot also meant that you could hardly take a shower and that it was very hot in the camper because there is no electricity available. I also found it scary at night. Cars that come and go and park close to you. You are in bed feeling vulnerable. Same with the police cars driving by. Always the feeling that you are doing something that is not allowed when you are parked so freely. We also got the chance to document it all. We have made in total 16 movies. Eight hours of mesmerizing entertainment. Sometimes very slow, but sometimes full of energy. And hopefully well worth following. More than a lot of work went into making these movies. Although gradually we got used to the habit of filming the right material and not always have our cameras on ready to shoot every story we came across. It turned out telling a story is not so difficult at all. Even with a little material. Also, what certainly helps is sitting for 30 years next to the greatest storytellers of our time. Editing proved to be more elegant than we expected it to be. Sure, we had to dive deep into DaVinci Resolve, Blackmagic's design-free video editing software, but this paid off really well. The only thing we needed was the only thing we had plenty of. Time. At least two full days of editing went into each movie. Two days of what we call mushrooming. This means you go sit in a chair, open your computer in the morning and in the evening you are still sitting in that same chair with your computer open. You haven't moved. Mushrooming. We have done a lot of mushrooming. The music making was also quite intense. Not because of a lack of inspiration, because there are always songs in our heads, but producing quality with limited gear. That proved to be a challenge. Luckily our laptops are state of the art, but we still needed to learn how to work with Logic, Apple's music production software. Also, since our space is very limited, you need to assemble and deassemble your studio every day you feel inspired. For the future, we need to focus much more into what we exactly want. We understand we need more time. You can't expect just to bump into a wonder house. Miracles don't happen. Because the houses were disappointing. There was nothing for sale that met our requirements. All we got was leftovers. Again, we need more time to settle in an environment, to be able to grab the opportunity if it arises. We will continue our search in September. Get ready for season two.